vaccination. Dante's vaccination. Dante's vaccination. Dante's vaccination. The changing of the guard, people's imaginations can wander. But you know, Galapagos and Mayweather, but it never happened. It's too big. It would be great to put Triple G on a card in September and Floyd exits the game to let you know who's the new hot cat in the game. Tonight he displayed that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. It was an impressive performance. I mean, did you think it was going to play out like that with the kind of style that Willie Monroe had? I wanted to see how Triple G did when it get that kind of style, a southpaw that moves and quick, and it seems he had no problem. One thing he doesn't get credit for, which I have talked about on the air, is his defense. It only got him when he get hit when he wanted to get hit. Like, he didn't get hit in the first two rounds, and then the third round he decided to let Monroe land. It was kind of weird. And I, let, I could see that he could slip, but he didn't want to slip. He wanted Willie to get comfortable, so once he got comfortable, he'll stay in front of Triple G, and then Triple G assault him. Yeah, you, you beat me to the point. So I was gonna ask you because I noticed Max Kellerman. You know, he brought up you know him getting hit too much, saying that is, that's gonna make a lot of. That was intentional. That was intentional. You gotta understand when boxing, it's like when Floyd allows himself to get hit, when um, Roy Jones allows himself to get hit. Sometimes as we as boxers, we do that because we want our opponent to feel he's he's winning. He has an advantage. He has a, he's a chance because I can't get you to stand in front of me and of course you're going to be running and moving unless I let you feel that you have a shot. So when Triple G was tired of running, let him run, he gave him an opportunity to land some punches so he could get comfortable and once he got comfortable, take him out. It's, it's a boxing tactic that we use. Yeah. So you had no problem with him getting caught with the shots he got caught with? He did that intentionally. That was intentionally done because how do you not get hit for two rounds and then the third round let a guy hit you? Uh -huh. You know, it doesn't just happen. Yeah. And like Monroe found him. Uh -huh. Monroe was doing the same punches earlier that they threw later. Uh -huh. He wanted Monroe to get some confidence up, some mossy, so he can stand in front of him. Mm -hmm. So he can land better punches. Okay. It, it's a trick. I've done it in the past. Sugar Ray's done it. Hagler does it. Even Floyd does it sometimes. That's why you see rematches with, with uh, Madonna, rematches with Castillo. Because sometimes he stands there and let guys punch him. He can make you miss, mm -hmm. but it's not competitive enough for the spectator. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we do do things, my bad, to let the spectator feel that our opponent's competitive so you don't think that we're just blowing them out the water. Mm -hmm. Okay? As long as the shots don't hurt us. If we rolling with them, that's why we can roll with shots and roll, take them here, take them there. They're not really aggressive shots. There's shots that actually the guy's opponent is touching, trying to find out where we at. Uh -huh. And once he finds out where we at, we let him think he knows where we at, and then we move from the big shots and allow land our big shots. For me to hit you with a good shot, I need you to open up. Mm -hmm. That's a rule in boxing. I need you to open up. Okay. And, and, and what, what you think about um, what you think about Edis Lonnie Lawrence? Since he had a style that was very similar to Edis Lonnie Lawrence style, he was southpaw. He's a boxer. We know Laura moves around the ring. Um, I talked to uh, Abe Sanchez. And he didn't seem like he really wanted that fight. I, what do you think? I mean, that's you're, you're part of the management team, pretty much. I'm a southpaw, and if you can avoid southpaws, you avoid them. It, it make you it's an ugly fight. It makes you work harder. Um, you got to do things with a south. I'm a southpaw. I hate it fighting southpaws, and I'm a southpaw. So of course, if you can avoid the southpaws, you avoid them. It's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, they had to fight a southpaw today, and they executed, and they showed how vulnerable. Uh, Monroe was, and they was able to initiate the action, initiate the damage, get a win, a knockout victory again, the 20th big knockout victory, and now you got to ask questions. Should Canelo get in a ring with him? Should Cotto? Yes. Let's get back to old boxing. When I was boxing, I got in a ring with everybody. I don't care who you are. If you're going to knock me out, you got to prove it first. So we need to go back to that cycle. Mm -hmm. But Oscar De La Hoya, he said that Canelo won't be ready for Golovkin for another two years, so... You know, that's an excuse to me personally. You're waiting for him to show weakness so you have a chance of a bigger shot. Canelo, was Canelo ready for Floyd? Yes. If you got 42 victories, you're ready for everybody in the game. There's no way in heck you got 40-something fights, you're not ready. That's an old... You're waiting for the right timing. 
-hmm. In two years, you're gonna have another excuse if he keeps knocking everybody out. Let's get it over with. Let's get it on now, okay? Why? Either he is who he is or he's not. I mean, what's it gonna be? 50, 50 and one? 50, 60 and one before you wanna fight Triple G? Triple G has less fights than you, but you say he's not ready. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm being honest. I mean, De La Hoya, I'm gonna call you out. I'm gonna say, listen, that's bull crap. You're saying that he's not ready. How many fights does the man need to be ready? He's fighting high caliber opposition. He knocked out James Kirkland, okay? Put him against Cotto, the winner fights Triple G. Period. There it goes, there it goes. What if you can't get that fight though, Kelly? Who do you want to see out there? Well, we got Peter Quillen, Carl Froch. Let him go after Quillen. I think Quillen be a very good fight for him. Quillen's not busy enough. People don't know a lot about Quillen. But he's undefeated. So it makes makes sense. I would go after Cotto. Mm -hmm. Fight everybody around him. Break every barrier around him where Canelo's forced into a fight with Triple G. I want to see it. The world wants to see it. It makes sense. Make it happen. This this stalling. Stop defending your belts. Defending yourself. And stop. And start. You know. Start. Stop protecting it. Okay. Start going after the opponents. I mean, I don't understand. My era. I fought everybody. You wanted to fight me. I didn't care who you was. Okay. It didn't matter whether the crowd liked you. They didn't like you. Whether you had a belt. Didn't have a belt. Fight the best so that you just simply can say, you know what? Whether the lose or draw, I fought the best out there. Gotcha. Thanks for your time, man. Anything thank else you want to say, Kevin? I want to say, I want to thank, thank K2 Promotions for putting me on tonight, Tom Loeffler. He's right here. He has Triple G. I did Klesko's fight two weeks ago. I was in the garden for that one. Watch more of me. Talk about me commentating, broadcasting, bringing the fights to you live and direct, and giving the information that you really need to see and really need to hear.